Porsche Cayman GT4 RS track right along. You guys are in for a treat. What's up, man? How are you doing? Kevin, how do you like the car? She is uh, brilliant. I had a previous GT4 and I was always hoping for a bit more power and shorter gears. And then they give it to you. Hell yeah. And then you're like, where's more power? <laughs> Which is not appropriate in any way. But the car feels phenomenal. I think it's a skilled car where it's so good out of factory that you might feel like you're doing well, but you actually have a lot to learn to get this. There's some advantages to having a mid-engine car that would be obvious to some of the instructors that are looking for a polar moment of inertia. We're trying to figure out right. when it would start turning in on. So this car doesn't have rear wheel steer. Oh, so it's a little bit more pure. So my goal is to figure out what this car likes. It just finished braking. Oh my god, that sound! Are we able to roll up the windows? Can we roll up the windows? Journey. That was awesome. What a vehicle. Great driving too, man. Oh, thanks. We're, again, just learning the track, so yeah. we're just driving about six or seven tenths, and that's where we're leaving it until car's warmed up, driver's warmed up, learns the track a bit better. Yeah, no, that was great, man. Th this car just is, is so well sorted too. You know, even when you were playing with a little bit of that oversteer right at the chicane, yeah. you know, you're just like, it's, it seems, from the passenger seat, it seems it's a very, um, it doesn't seem too snappy. It seems like it's a pretty progressive car. I mean, the, I've driven the Cayman GT4 before. Surprisingly, this car uh, came out of factory fairly well sorted. Yeah, yeah. It's it, got it's... a little bit of... So we dialed in a little bit more camber in the front before we brought it out. That's okay. about the only change we made. We left the ride height the same, and I think we could do some reduction. Uh, the tires is something we wanted to feel out in the factory height with close to factory camber to see what is it that they deliver. And then we'll make some adjustments accordingly. And how does this compare to the GT4? The previous gen, or this current gen? The RS versus the GT4, yeah. Uh, 718, you'll notice first of all, the power delivery and the gearing, completely different. So I'm in a very different gear in the GT4 going through the same. Dynamics wise, if you're running on the cups, the GT4 is more than capable of coming up to the limit of the, G the cup twos. 
that come from factory. The, the motor, the extra RPM range that I get allows me to be able to stick in a gear all, almost up till about 8.5k 8, 8 and have power on demand. So you're getting not only the higher redline and the more power, but you also have shorter gearing as well. Is that correct? In this, it feels to me like it has shorter gearing. I have to go back and look. Okay. When we took delivery, we didn't get an opportunity to go back and look through any of the stuff. I was more excited that we actually were getting something and it came For so sure. quick because the Civic Type R was also a phone call we received saying, hey, you're getting it. Yeah. We'd been waiting for two years. Amazing. <laughs> had a Amazing. list to get the LE and then got kicked over to the Type R because they ran out of LEs before they gave it to us. So when it comes to actual driving dynamics, where we're not looking at the engine transmission and of course the induction note, but when it comes to actual driving dynamics, mm -hmm. Pretty close to the GT4. Are varied between the two. So Sorry, I could hold higher lateral G's in this with the same tires, and I could tell the valving in this is a bit more aggressive for a higher spring rate. So I can go through the carousel at a higher carrying speed than this. Go through higher transient loads. So if I went through the sh chicane, it would feel different in the GT4. It feel a bit less stable, if you will. You have to be a bit more specific if you're talking about sprung mass. If I feel like it's a lighter car. I feel this car is light on its feet, and it has the power to be able to back up against a 911 GT3. They're not comparable between the 718 and this, even though it's the same chassis, I should say, the GT4 and the GT4 RS. There's too much that's varied. The aero load on this car is better through the carousel, so I'd be able to hold for two or three reasons here. If I have the same tires, it would be my suspension can actually take the carousel, the loading, my rebound's actually higher. It feels higher in this car compared to the GT4. I can't tell what the difference is in compression. I never got a chance to feel it out close enough to each other on a track that had, like Sebring. Sebring, you would find out in immediately what the differences are in suspension loadings. In this car, the, even this track, we were only here for the first time, so it's almost unfair to say, talk about them in comparison without having them back to back. Got it. Memory-wise, uh, I'll, I almost preferred the GT3 until running this at Road America. I almost preferred the GT3, the 991.2, last gen. And what do you prefer about that? There's a way that that car feels around the track that's uh, like I can actually load the rear and have the rear be controlled. And I, I dialed out rear wheel steer in our 991.2 on purpose. We just wanted to have a apple to apples comparison between the two cars. And we were looking forward to bringing it to the track to run between. but. I like the car's feel. The front end had a better feel than this car. But I believe that solved on the 992 GT3, because now you've gotten something that's even better than this. It's the not a McPherson. The double wishbone, you mean, in the front? Sorry? The double wishbone with the 992 the GT3? The double wishbone's a massive game changer for any of us. Not only is it a wider track in the front, they've also come up with something that should have been done, I feel like, in the 1980s. But they finally came out with it. And I've, that's going to feel phenomenal. We're looking forward to running a 992 back to back against this because that's a more appropriate comparison. The GT4 just, even though people want to compare, this car is so hard to get that you don't want somebody feeling like getting an allocation for a GT4 was a loss. I <laughs> think that is a massively good car. If you really wanted to compare this, it should go up against its bigger brother that has the same engine. Yeah. The power delivery changes the way, way this car feels. I'm able to come out of a corner, even if there's a mistake, because this car has the power to back it up and be able to go through. On the GT4, I feel like you actually, it's more noticeable, because you don't have the power to back you up if you are offline a bit, or if you're going to a corner. Would this be forcing, so would you say that the GT3 can cover some deficiencies in driving, whereas the GT4 is going to be a little bit less forgiving in that way? Then? If you're comparing a GT3 from the same generation to a GT4. 992. Yeah, 992, yeah. you. The GT3 hides. There is better. Uh, it's got better tractive forces in the front. That's one of the first obvious things that you between the 718 chassis and the 911 chassis. It's it's also not forgiving in certain ways where if you have oversteer and you have your weight, uh, uh, you can't hide it when you go into a corner and you're throwing your rear end around a little too much. It will want to continue. This car naturally has a, the polar, polar moment of inertia on this car is better than right. a GT3. So if you don't respect the weight 
of a GT3 in the rear, and you got into this car, this will allow less mistakes. It'll turn quicker, but it'll also not continue turning as a GT3 would. I see. So if I went into a corner, if we picked a corner here, and I went into, say, turn one, I go down the straight, I miss my brake braking marker by a bit, I turn in a bit too aggressively, I have my rear end coming around. The GT3, you'll notice that, if I'm talking about the previous gen, you'll notice that the rear end will uh, want to continue coming around on you, especially if you did a lift throttle. Uh, and the rear wheel steer will kick it out more aggressively than you want. This car, I don't have that problem because I don't have rear wheel steer. And the car's willing to turn in uh, a bit better. But if I went to a 992, now I've got a wider track, I've got double the uh, double wishbone and or short long arm. It it will feel better in turn in than this. So if I degrade them, the GT3 feels better in dynamics if you're used to driving a rear engine car. The GT4 would be below that, in my opinion. <laughs> GT. 4 RS would be next, and the 992 GT3 would be above. That would be a ranking. Sick, cars. man. But we have, we have to drive them back to back. Don't have that opportunity. It's hard to afford that opportunity. Dude, thanks so much, man. Much appreciated.